Good night, everyone. It's December 16th, 2020. With this, we start the show Confirmado la Moncloa, a review of the Spanish political situation. It will be around 30 minutes long to focus on a few ideas. As always, we will start with the comment of the day. And today's comment is the complicated and complex days that are going to come. Days that we have to keep calm, read in between lines. Days where there's a total war and conflict inside the same national government between the different sides that there are. And there are also days that we have to keep being cheered up, or at least trying to. We know it's difficult, but we have to try. And we have to keep our minds clear and know that these days are going to be very complicated and that we're going to see with clarity the ignorant political class we have. These days it seems like reality is totally disconnected from the streets, at least the reality that the government and the opposition are seeing. Also, we're not seeing the number of deaths or the hospitals or the people dead like they were telling us in March, though people do continue dying. It's just invisible deaths. And with more than 70,000 deaths, they're not invisible and they're not unreal. They're real deaths. And we're not just talking about the bad management and the possible negligence of the national government for all of these deaths, but also of the media. That instead of explaining the deaths of those poor people that died of COVID-19, they're explaining things that are just nonsense or not important. And we have to remember that when one dies, they can't do anything else. They just disappear. They can't talk. They can't communicate. They can't listen to stories. They can't explain the stories, nor be with those that loved him or anything like that. And we can't forget the 70,000 deaths for COVID-19. Not only but because of the negligence of this government, but because of their lives and because we have to keep our feet on the ground and stay focused on reality. And in exceptional moments like now, we have to continue, we'll keep going, we'll be here every day. And with this, we enter the headlines of the day. The first headline, we're going to be very clear because we can read in between lines and we can say that Calvino and Avalos are against Iglesias. The defense of the democracy stays on Calvino and Avalos against Iglesias and the rest, which is something totally incredible. The second headline of the day, the government's official minutes that the government had said that were done of all of the meetings done with the experts, the health experts, it seems like they don't exist. Or maybe they have disappeared. Lies of the government. Lies that are not only seen here nationally, but seen outside of our borders, like in Italy, that some media have mentioned that though Italy has more than 65,000 deaths from COVID-19, and that has made that Italy is officially the country of the European Union with more deaths of COVID-19. Well, some media say, isn't it maybe Spain that is hiding the data and Spain, the country with more deaths from COVID-19? Well, that might be. The third headline, the strict restrictions that are going to be applied for Christmas in Europe and some of the countries that might do that Spain copies them and also accelerating the vaccines. Vaccines that we must have in mind and keep in mind that a lot of people and every day there's more people that don't have such a clear idea if they want to have the vaccine taken or not. It wouldn't be the first person nor the last that we hear saying, well, if the vaccine we see that it works in a few months, then maybe I will put it, but not right now. We will see the results of the vaccine and we will also see how the closure and the restrictions of Europe affect here in Spain and we will also analyze that. And the last headline, the new trial versus Otegi, which is a bit curious because Otegi, with all of his rights, he went to the European court that decided the trial should be repeated. Well, if the European court has decided 
on your favor to repeat the trial, why are you so mad? Or is it that maybe you didn't want that? Or maybe, or maybe he didn't think that was the decision the European Tribunal was going to do, decide on. And we won't start talking about Echenique because we don't want to have our mouth all dirty saying some things about some type of people that are just totally unworthy of being in this show or even talking about him. Well, th with this, we get into the first headline. Um, Calviño and Avalos, after today's cabinet meeting, are the ones that are defending the democracy right now in the government. Once Minister Robles has just disappeared because she had the opportunity to try and be a substitute of Pedro Sánchez, but she didn't go with it. And the two of them, Calviño and Avalos, are curious people because Calviño hasn't gotten off her official car and hasn't gotten to the real street and know the real problems and everything. And Avalos, well, he's just Avalos. Avalos that could do a new version of Torrente. And both of them could say that it's just gotten to such a vain position that they are the ones that are trying to defend democracy in the government. But the thing is that the rest of the ministers of the cabinet are just so worried that they don't want to be penally charged. And of course, the first in line would be Minister Ia and the second one, Minister Escriba, and Marlaska, probably the third one. And we must add to all of this the call from Pedro Sánchez to Pablo Casado that some of the media has qualified as blackmail from Pedro Sánchez to Pablo Casado. I agree on something. But maybe Pedro Sánchez should simply just offer Pablo Casado to be the vice president of the government because he's capable of simply just saying yes. Because Pablo Casado isn't that intelligent. But it's also strange that after seven months of Pedro Sánchez not calling or contacting Pablo Casado that he now just simply calls out of the blue about a topic that they haven't agreed on or the political parties haven't agreed on for years and years and years. And maybe both political parties, the big ones, the PSOE, the Social Democrats and the People's Party, should remember why in 1986 they agreed to change the law of the judicial power, leaving it with a bit less of separation of powers than it had before. And right now, probably, none of the possible agreements is good enough if it's not to be in the same situation as it was before 1986. Because the separation of powers, but the real one, totally independent one, is fundamental in a democracy. Casado is doing a good thing, attending the call of Pedro Sánchez. But what is strange is not that they don't agree on something, because Pablo Casado wants to agree on something with him, but the fact that Pablo Casado isn't trying to be a leader of the opposition and trying to demonstrate some initiative and so also to be proactive. We're in a really complicated week for this national government and not only has Casado had a lot of opportunities to lead the situation in some of topics, but every day that goes by, he's just being more ridiculous than the day before. And the news that Pedro Sánchez was calling with such good manners and good initiative, Pablo Casado, but that Pablo Casado refused to renovate the Judicial Powers Council. And that is what the media said. That's after all, what the media says is what the people get the information from. Though we usually don't do things like this, we do encourage the people of the People's Party to please open their eyes and see that they have an incompetent leader, Pablo Casado. Don't the People's Party see that if they substitute Pablo Casado for someone that's good, they will recover a lot of the representatives? Don't you see that Pablo Casado in a democracy isn't doing what he should as a real opposition and for democracy in itself? Don't the People's Party see that if they seize Pablo Casado and put someone competent and that knows how to manage, they will have an opportunity? 
can't they see that Pablo Casado is totally finished? Well, it seems that in the People's Party, they must be so frightened to lose their salary that they don't want to move or do any movement at all. And as we said many times, as well as in the Social Democrats, there are men and people that need the position they have, the workplace they have to live because they don't know how to do any other thing. It also happens in the People's Party. And we all should think if this is something that happens in the majority of the political parties, that when they achieve certain status that they never achieved or had before, of power and money, they end up thinking that it's not worthy to do anything for this country. It's sad, but it's the Spanish reality. It's the Spanish reality we have in the political context. And it's sad that people like Calviño and Avalos are the ones trying to defend the democracy in Spain now. It simply means that this government doesn't have nowhere else to hold on to. And entering the second headline, the lies of the government, that some media in Italy have today started saying that probably Spain is the country with more deaths of COVID-19, though Italy has just turned into the official country of the European Union with more deaths of COVID-19, but the media is trying to say that probably the government here in Spain has hided some of the data, or that the government has simply lied. Because the official statistics say that there are around 70,000 or more deaths from COVID-19 here in Spain. So the record of Europe wouldn't be Italy, but Spain. And changing topic, the official minutes of the government that they say that they don't have now, of the meetings of the experts that supposedly met to decide about the restrictions of Spain for the COVID-19. And now that the official minutes have been claimed, it seems like they don't exist. It must be like the advising of Podemos of a lot of money, that the second of Podemos told the judge that it was all verbal. Well, it seems like the experts, the health experts, the ones that were meeting with the government and advising them in what to do with the COVID-19 was probably also just verbal because it has no other reason, no explanation. It's starting to be too much of a cliche, the verbal things here in Spain. It makes no sense that in a democracy that there are a lot of protocols to act, that all ends up just being defined verbally. And we won't enter into the response of the President Pedro Sanchez when saying that he didn't want to say who was in the plane that all of us paid because it's public money for some friends of his. And I don't want to say their names because of their privacy. It's just unreal, totally surreal. Does Pedro Sanchez think He is Lola Flores. Doesn't he know that his salary, the money he wins, is because of his position as president and he is paid uh, with public money that's of all of us and that he can't invite his friends with public money nor the sons or daughters of his friends? Does Pedro Sánchez think he's in a dictatorship? But what concept does Sánchez have of the democracy? Sánchez is starting to be like a spoiled little kid that isn't obtaining what he wants and doesn't know what to reply. And when they f catch him doing something like the thing of the plane inviting the friends, his response is incoherent and totally embarrassing. Every day is clear that Pedro Sánchez, and we know he does know it, that he is going to end up at least charged. But not only him, but also Iglesias, Illa, and at least Fernando Simón will be legally charged because you can't manage a, a situation like this lying to the citizens of Spain, lying to all of the citizens and also just leaving the proof behind. And it's not normal that the official minutes of the experts in health that supposedly met and were meeting all this time for the COVID-19 now simply don't exist. And Ivan Redondo should probably also be charged. After all, we just have people, the ones we just mentioned, that are just not worthy of democracy nor politics. It's good that we've seen all of this 
because some thought that Zapatero was the only one that was so close to try to prostitute democracy. And as we can see, Sanchez is running so fast, capable to do worse than Zapatero. One of them will probably be tried in an international court and the other one will probably be tried by a national court. Please remember that here in Catalonia, Junqueras, the leader of the pro-independence and also the representatives here in Catalonia, thought that they weren't going to have any responsibility for what they did and they ended up in prison. And so it seems that it's the minimum destiny that is awaiting Pedro Sánchez, Pablo Iglesias, Fernando Simón, and Minister Illa. And all of them should end up in prison. And if they don't end up in prison, we will have lost democracy. Because there are many acts out of the law, also many acts that fail the duty they have, and also actions that every day have less sense than the one before. And the fact that there are still some media that don't go against this government only proves one thing, that most of them are simply prostitutes to the service of this government for a salary, because there's no other explanation. Because the thing that the government of Pedro Sanchez says that there are no official minutes of the meetings of the experts in health for the COVID-19 and the fact that even Italy, some media have to say the truth about the number of deaths here in Spain for COVID-19, when no media or almost none here in Spain say anything about this, just confirms the immorality of the media here in Spain. And the other headline, it seems that the restrictions in Europe and like in Germany, Netherlands and in other countries, it seems that maybe they're trying to do the vaccination a bit earlier than they planned. And we continue saying, but not only us, but also many doctors, that it seems complicated to administer vaccines that haven't been tested in a massive way. And also when the pharmaceuticals have required from the governments to have no responsibility if anything should happen. Are Pablo Iglesias, Pedro Sánchez, Iván Redondo going to do a Manuel Fraga and going to put the vaccine in front of everyone in prime time on TV to try and create confidence in the people? Well, people should trust the government, but it's not what is happening now. It's going to be a complicated week. It's going to be a week we will see how the vaccines work and also a week that seems that Pablo Iglesias taken the initiative in the national government and we will see this week what he tries to do or what he intends to do and that is going to be a really complicated week we will see what happens also remember we said that it, it was going to be a complicated week because of the government and the judges because there's a conflict between them and that the judges in Europe were the only opposition this government had and with that the other headline the trial, the retrial of Otegi. Otegi went in front of the European court and the European court resolved in his favor, saying that the trial has to be redone. And when the European court says that doing the trial again means a compensation because it wasn't done correctly. Well, now Otegi and some of his friends, like for example, Lechenike, and some friends of the extreme left wing and of ETA, well, now it seems that they're not happy with what the European Tribunal has said and the fact that the trial is going to be redone. Well, in the end, if the European Court said and resolved in favor of Otoyegi and the Supreme Court, the only thing that has done is said that, okay, the, the European Court is saying something that is true and we are going to redo the trial, what are they afraid of? Are they afraid that maybe they will talk about the fact that Otegi is the founder of a political party that is friends of ETA, those that killed with a gunshot in the neck, and that Otegi and his friends are the ones that are holding up Pedro Sánchez's government? Or is maybe Podemos afraid that people see that their partners are the friends of the pro-independence and those that fired a gunshot in the neck, like Bildu, 
Is Sanchez afraid to be related to potential delinquents? Because that's the reality after all. Don't let yourself be fooled but some of the media that is just bought by the government. And please think calmly. More than 70,000 deaths from COVID-19. The worst economic numbers of all the world. Stores, bars, restaurants, all of them just abandoned. As well as the travel agencies, totally abandoned by the national government. The freelancers that have seen their fees rising. The minimum wage that the government wants to increase when there is no money at all. Conflicts. Hate. That's the ideal scenery for Podemos. Of people that have never really worked, that don't know the reality, nor the economy. Remember that one of their friends just say that they have to print more bills at this rhythm. The next decision of the government of Pedro Sánchez and Pablo Iglesias will be to give a printer to be able to print your own bills to every citizen. This is something only people that are not competent nor have the ability to manage the situation would say or think. But you know what's the problem? To say that this government is made up of liars, that the government lies, that this government is hiding the official minutes and that this government is related to political parties that are friends with those that killed others with a gunshot on their neck. You will hear this only in a few media like here and in other few ones. And that is a totally sad reality. But we have to be as many as we can. Not because we say so or that we think we have the truth and the total truth because we can always commit an error. But the data is data. And no one can say anything against the fact that according to official statistics, the country with more deaths from COVID-19 is Spain. Also, the country where the gross domestic product has fallen more is also Spain. The country that has left the businesses on their own and left them die is here in Spain. And the only country where the president arrives and is just applauded by his ministers is Spain. And when some people tell us, don't worry, Fernando Simón, Minister Illa, Pedro Sánchez and Pablo Iglesias will end up being legally charged, we think not only they have to be legally accused, but all of the ministers of this cabinet, because all of them have made the decisions in the cabinet as one, and all of them have acted as total criminals. And no one should be out of that consideration. As well as it happened with Junqueras, and most of the government and representatives of the Catalonian government ended up in prison. Some of us think that the national government should all end up in front of the justice. And keep in mind that Junqueras was sentenced to 13 years of prison with zero deaths. Pedro Sánchez, 70,000 deaths. You can do your own numbers of what each one deserves because what is clear is that both of them wanted to destroy democracy. Both of them have acted like total incompetence, but one of them that has already been sentenced to 13 years of prison, never killed anyone. And the other one, because of his management, has at least 70,000 deaths at his back. I don't know what every death costs, but if the known deaths are 13 years, the hate is 13 years, the anger costs 13 years, what does one death cost? Well, you must multiply that for 70,000 more. Some of us think, and we still trust justice, and we think that this has only started. This week is going to be really intense, and we must stay really, really vigilant in reading between lines. Also, the cabinet of today, well, really yesterday, was key to show all of the conflicts that there are inside the government, also to see the promises that haven't been fulfilled, like the promises of Pablo Iglesias and the evictions, the fights between Calviño Ábalos and Iglesias, and all of that has to be thought about, thinking about the moment, 
And when the mind clear that the government is doing and acting in a strange manner for the legislation we have and also all of the laws and the constitution. We will see how all of this ends and we want to try and to cheer everyone up. We keep saying that things, though it might not seem like that, are better than a few months ago. The situation is progressing, though it's a very complicated moment. And keep in mind that even if this government is substituted by another one, it's not yet resolved. But if the government was substituted, at least the people will be more happy, more cheered up, less sad. But that won't change in a day. Though so we will be here. And please stick around, or as we say in Spain, seguimos.